Today is the most auspicious appearance day of Lord Balaram, Balaram Purunima. <clears throat> the appearance, the birth of Balaram is very mysterious, even according to the scriptures. The birth of Krishna was uh, celebrated in Vrindavan even though Krishna was born in Mathura. So that is explained in the Bhagavatam that uh, Krishna appeared as the son of Devaki and Vasudeva but because Vasudeva and Devaki were very anxious for Krishna's protection, therefore Krishna uh, gave them the idea that he should be transferred in the middle of the night to Vrindavan, to the house of Nanda and Yashoda. But Balaram's birth is not so simple. Balaram actually is the Supreme Lord who entered first the womb of Devaki as the seventh son of Devaki and Vasudeva. So when Devaki was pregnant for the seventh time, Bhagavatam explains, before that the six children born of Devaki were killed by Kamsa as soon as they were born. So when everyone was anxiously waiting, what is going to happen? They are waiting for the eighth child to be born. But before that, what is going to happen to the small infant children that are born of Devaki? The six have been killed. So seventh one, what's going to happen? So they're waiting. Devaki was pregnant for the seventh time. She was in the prison of Kamsa. And before the child could actually be delivered from the mother's womb, before Balaram could come out of Devaki's womb. Apparently, the child died in the mother's womb. Devaki was supposed to have a miscarriage. So all the residents in the palace became very, very unhappy about it. That this child was not killed by Kamsa, but maybe because of the extreme fear of Devaki, that as soon as the child is going to be born, the child will be killed by Kamsa. So Devaki was in a state of constant fear for the safety of her child. So the people thought Devaki, because she was in extreme fear, so therefore, the child died in the womb itself. But actually something else happened. The Bhagavatam explains, Krishna ordered Yogamaya to transfer the child from Devaki's womb to Rohini's womb. Rohini was another queen of uh, Vasudeva. Vasudeva had 16 queens. Devaki was the principal queen. So, Rohini and the other queens, other than Devaki, all other queens of Vasudeva, because of the atrocities of Kamsa, they were hiding in different places away from Mathura. So, uh, Rohini was hiding in the house of Nanda Maharaj in Vrindavan. The child in the seventh son, of Devaki was transferred by Yoga Maya on the order of Krishna to the womb of Rohini. And Balaram uh, took birth as the son of Rohini. Even though initially Balaram entered the womb of Devaki. So this mystery was not known was not known even to Devaki and Vasudeva. Hmm? Only Krishna knew. And uh, of course, Rohini, 
Shinyu and Nanda and Yashoda knew about this. Nobody else knew about this. Uh, so when uh, Balaram was born, he was born as the son of Rohini. Rohini Nandana, another name for Balaram. Hmm. So Krishna had ordered Yogamaya to transfer Balaram from Devaki's womb to Rohini's womb. So that is the description in the Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 2nd chapter, 13th verse. Garbha Sankarshanatam Vai Prahuhu Sankarshanam Bhuvi Rameti Loka Ramanat Balabhadram Balochrayat. The meaning of this verse is the son of Rohini will also be celebrated as Sankarshana because of being sent from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini. This is Krishna's order to Yogamaya. Because Balaram was transferred from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini, he will also be called Sankarshana. He will be called Rama because of his ability to please all the inhabitants of Gokula. Because he was born as the son of Rohini in Gokula, Nanda Gokula in Vrindavan. So, because of his ability to please all the residents of Vrindavan, he will be called Rama. Rama means one who gives the highest pleasure. And he will be known as Balabhadra because of his extensive physical strength. He will be very, very strong. So he will be called as Balabhadra. Three names. Sankarshana, Rama and Balabhadra. As per this particular verse of the Bhagavata. So in the purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, These are some of the reasons why Balarama is known as Sankarshana, Balarama, or sometimes Rama. In the Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, people sometimes object when Rama is accepted as Balaram. But although devotees of Lord Rama may object, they should know that there is no difference between Balaram and Lord Rama. Here, Srimad Bhagavatam clearly states that Balaram is also known as Rama. Rameti. Therefore, it is not artificial for us to speak of Lord Balaram as Lord Rama. Jaidev Goswami also speaks of three Ramas. Jaidev Goswami has written one, Dashavatara Stotra. In the Dashavatara Stotra, Jayadev Goswami describes three different incarnations. All the three are known as Rama. The first Rama described by Jayadev Goswami is called Parshurama. Hmm? You've heard the name Parshurama. Parashu, he was holding one axe. He was having the axe as a weapon, Parashu. And using that axe, he killed all the miscreant Kshatriyas all over the surface of the earth, 21 town, times he went round the earth, killing all the miscreant Kshatriyas. So he is Parshurama. Then the second Rama described in the Dashavatara Stotra of Jayadeva Goswami is called Raghupati Rama. Famous Lord Rama, Ramachandra, son of Dasharatha and Kausalya. So he is also Rama. And the third Rama described by Jayadev Goswami in the Shavatara Stotra is Balarama. Hala Yudha Rama. His weapon was Hala, plow. You see our deity holding a plow in one hand. Hala Dhara, Hala Yudha. Hala Graha, holding Hala. All of them are Ramas. Actually, there is no difference between any of these Ramas. All of them are Rama. 
also the bhagavatam describes that uh, the name giving ceremony of krishna and balaram was performed by nanda maharaj in nanda gokula uh, balaram when he was born he was born to rohini so rohini is his mother now whom does balaram know as his father vasudeva is not there in nanda gokula who is there in nanda gokula nanda maharaj so balaram considers rohini as his mother and nanda maharaj as his father and krishna of course even though he was born as the son of devaki and vasudeva he was known as the son of yashoda and nanda in vrindavan so in nanda maharaj's house these two children very very attractive very beautiful very pleasing to everyone they grew up as the sons of nanda maharaj having their mothers krishna's mother as yashoda and balaram's mother as rohini so both of them they were always kept busy by these naughty children krishna and balaram so bhagavatam describes where is that the name giving ceremony of krishna the name giving ceremony of krishna and balaram was performed by nanda maharaj and that is described in the 8th uh, chapter of the 10th canto uh, it is said here that uh, the priest of the yadu dynasty namely garga muni who was highly elevated in austerity and penance was then inspired by vasudeva to go see nanda maharaj at his home when nanda maharaj saw garga muni present at his home nanda was so pleased that he stood up to receive him with folded hands although seeing garga muni with his eyes nanda maharaj could not appreciate that garga muni was adhokshaja that is he was not an ordinary person seen by material senses uh when garga muni had been properly received as a guest and was very comfortably seated Nanda Maharaj submitted with gentle and submissive words dear sir because you are a devotee you are full in everything yet my duty is to serve you kindly order me what can i do for you oh my lord oh great devotee persons like you move from one place to another not for their own interest but for the sake of poor hearted grihasthas or householders otherwise they have no interest in going from one place to another O oh, great saintly person you have compiled the astrological knowledge by which one can understand past and present unseen things by the strength of this knowledge any human being can understand what he has done in his past life and how it affects his present life this is known to you my lord you are the best of the brahmanas especially because you are fully aware of the jyotish shastra the astrological signs therefore you are naturally the spiritual master of every human being this being so since you have kindly come to my house kindly execute the reformatory activities for my two sons krishna and balaram gargamuni said my dear nanda maharaj i am the priestly guide of the yadu dynasty this is known everywhere therefore if i perform the purificatory processes for your sons kamsa will consider them as the sons of devaki 
Kamsa was waiting to actually kill the eighth son of Devaki. But as was described earlier in this Bhagavatam, uh, the seventh child Kamsa could not lay his hands on. Apparently the child died in the womb. The eighth son also escaped from Kamsa. So Kamsa was very anxious. Where is this eighth child? And what happened to the seventh child? Something mysterious happened. So Kamsa was always very, very anxious to find out about these two missing sons of Devaki. So therefore, here Gargamuni is telling, <clears throat> there is a danger if this name-giving ceremony is performed publicly, there is a danger because Gargamuni is performing and Gargamuni is the priest of the Yadu dynasty, Kamsa may suspect that, oh, these two children are in... Nanda Maharaj's house. So then immediately, what will Kamsa do? He will just arrange to kill these two children. So therefore, um, Gargamuni is suggesting to Nanda Maharaj, Kamsa is both a great diplomat and a very sinful man. Therefore, having heard from Yogamaya, the daughter of Devaki, that the child who will kill him has already been born somewhere else, Having heard that the eighth pregnancy of Devaki could not bring forth a female child and having understood your friendship with Vasudeva, Kamsa, upon hearing that the purificatory process has been performed by me, by Gargamuni, who is the priest of the Yadu dynasty, may certainly consider all these points and suspect that Krishna is the son of Devaki and Vasudeva. Then he might take steps to kill Krishna. That would be a catastrophe. So therefore, Nanda Maharaj is now telling Gargamuni, My dear great sage, if you think that you are performing this process of purification will make Krishna Kamsa suspicious, then secretly chant the Vedic mantras and perform the purifying process of second birth here in the cow shed of my house without the knowledge of anyone else, even my relatives, for this process of purification is essential. So, uh, Nanda Maharaj requested Gargamuni secretly do this name-giving ceremony for Krishna and Balaram. So, Gargamuni uh, said, this child, the son of Rohini, Rohini's son was born first. Hmm? Before Krishna was born, Balaram was born. So he is the elder child among the two, Balaram and Krishna and Balaram. So this child, the son of Rohini, will give all happiness to his relatives and friends by his transcendental qualities. Therefore, he will be known as Rama. The same thing what Krishna had told Yogamaya. Same thing Gargamuni, by his astrological calculations, he is actually uh, calculating and determining the appropriate name for the child, the son of Rohini. What is he telling? He will be known as Rama because he will give all happiness. Rama means one who gives pleasure or happiness to all his relatives and friends by his transcendental qualities. Because he'll be manifest, he will manifest extraordinary bodily strength, he'll also be known as Bala. Bala means extraordinary strength. So he'll also be known as Bala. Moreover, because he unites two families, Vasudeva's family and the family of Nanda Maharaj. What has happened now? How is he uniting? Because Rohini is staying, the queen of Vasudeva, is staying with Nanda Maharaj. And Balaram is born in Nanda Maharaj's house. Hmm? Therefore, Gargamuni is telling, this child, who is also known as Rama and Bala, will unite the families of uh, Vasudeva and Nanda Maharaj. He will be known as Sankarshana. Sankarshana. 
So the same three names which Krishna had told Balaram will have, same three names, Gargamuni, by his astrological calculations, he gave these three names to Balaram. Rama, Bala, Sankarshana. And then after that, uh, Krishna was also given uh, the name Krishna. And then Krishna and Balaram began to perform their pastimes together in Vrindavan, in the house of Nanda Maharaj in the beginning. And later on, they started going outside. And then as soon as they were able to, very nicely, Shukarai Goswami is describing, as soon as they could walk, as, lo as long as they were not able to walk, they were crawling and just moving around in the house of Nanda Maharaj. But as soon as they could walk, immediately they start going, they started going outside the house of Nanda Maharaj to neighboring houses. And then what all they would do, both of them, simply to give pleasure to Nanda, Yashoda, Rohini, and all the other inhabitants of Gokula, Vrindavan. So uh, they started giving pleasure. When Krishna and Balaram with the strength of their legs, no. uh, Shukade Goswami is describing to Parikshit Maharaj and all the assembled sages, Krishna and Balaram's childhood pastimes. Nowhere in the scriptures you will find that an incarnation has appeared for a very serious purpose. What is that? For killing all the demons, protecting the devotees, establishing the religious principles. Nowhere you will find description of childhood activities of the incarnation. Nowhere you will find that. Rama, even though he was born in the palace of Dasharatha, Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata, Shatrugna. Uh, but still, even when he was a small boy, immediately Vishwamitra came and took away Rama and Lakshmana. So not much description is there of Rama's childhood pastimes. Not much description is there in the Ramayana. Hmm? But... Here, Shukadev Goswami is describing, as far as Krishna and Balaram are concerned, so much description is there of Krishna and Balaram's childhood activities. Even as very small children, all the pranks that Krishna and Balaram are playing are described by, very seriously by Shukadev Goswami. And all the great sages who are all big, big scholars, they are after self-realization. They have studied so many shastras, but they are not able to find out what is the absolute truth. What is this Brahman? Something with the absolute truth is called Brahman. Paramatma, Bhagavan. So many different descriptions. What is this absolute truth? They are very anxious to find out. And therefore, they are uh, sometimes engaging in studying the scriptures. Sometimes they are engaged in discussions with other learned scholars in the Vedas. Sometimes they go and attend discourses. So many, 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 many great sages, saintly persons, uh, Brahmarshis, Rajarshis, Devrishis, Arunodayas, Great, great sages who could purify places of pilgrimage themselves because they are very, very powerful having performed severe austerities. Even they, on the plea of going for some pilgrimage, they have come to this place where Parikshit Maharaj is preparing to quit his body. Why? Because they all knew Parikshit is no ordinary king. Parikshit was famous as a great devotee. So when Parikshit decided to 
uh, renounce his kingdom because he was cursed by a brahmana boy news spread everywhere oh parikshit is going to quit his body for that he is preparing 7 days sitting in a holy place and he is going to actually prepare himself for quitting his body so they all knew that parikshit quitting the body is no ordinary event so they all came to that spot where parikshit had assembled now uh, parikshit was sitting amid saintly persons of that local holy place they all came from all over the universe great great sages came and after they had all assembled soon shukade goswami walks into that assembly so then they are all completely uh, <clears throat> made aware uh, by some of the saintly persons among the assembled sages were able to recognize shukade goswami because shukade goswami was walking naked like a madman so he could not be recognized as a great sage or a saintly person so one of the questions asked in the bhagavatam by the sages of naimisharanya to sutta goswami how was shukade goswami recognized by parikshit maharaj how was he recognized so sutta goswami is explaining in the bhagavatam that when shukade goswami walked into that assembly of all great saintly persons amid whom parikshit was sitting then some of the saintly persons simply by looking at the face of shukade goswami could immediately understand here is a very 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 advanced transcendentalist so they stood up in respect for shukade goswami and when they stood up in respect everybody else followed them and all including parikshit stood up to receive shukade goswami very respectfully in their assembly then parikshit maharaj offered shukade goswami the seat of respect and then shukade goswami began to speak now shukade goswami was asked by parikshit maharaj to speak about the absolute truth so shukade goswami is seriously speaking but what is he speaking he is speaking about the activities of the supreme lord in his various incarnations and he is also describing the activities of the devotees of the supreme lord in his various incarnations so while describing he is describing the different devotees and the incarnations and he just mentioned krishna balaram they were born in the yadu dynasty and then they performed some activities and then some devotees also participated in those activities and then quickly shukade goswami went on to some other topic as soon as shukade goswami switched topic immediately parikshit stopped shukade goswami and requested him kindly tell me in detail about krishna and balaram's activities so then shukade goswami begins to describe beginning from the birth of krishna and balaram all the details of their birth and activities in detail shukade goswami describes so while describing uh, the childhood activities of krishna and balaram hmm? very seriously he is describing shukade goswami is describing uh he is um uh, uh describing that krishna and balaram began to play with the other children of the cowherd men thus awakening the transcendental bliss of the cowherd women the different mothers of the cowherd boys observing the very attractive childish restlessness of krishna all the gopis in the neighborhood to hear about krishna's activities again and again would approach mother yashoda and speak to her as follows see what are krishna and balaram doing 
Our dear friend Yashoda, your son comes to our houses before the milking of the cows and releases the calves and when the master of the house becomes angry, your son merely smiles. Sometimes he devises some process by which he steals palatable curd, butter and milk, which he then eats and drinks. When the monkeys assemble, he divides it with them and when the monkeys have their bellies so full that they won't take any more, he breaks the pots. Sometimes if he gets an opportunity to steal butter or milk from a house, he'll be, sorry, sometimes if he gets no opportunity to steal butter or milk from a house, he'll be angry at the householders and for his revenge, he will agitate the small children by pinching them. Then when the children began, begin to cry, Krishna will go away. So the neighboring uh, mothers of the different children are coming to Yashoda and actually uh, complaining. When the milk and curd are kept high on a swing hanging from the ceiling, Krishna and Balaram cannot reach it. They arrange to reach it by piling up various planks and turning upside down the mortar for grinding spices. Being quite aware of the contents of a pot, they pick holes in it. When the elderly gopis go about their household affairs, Krishna and Balaram sometimes go into a dark room, brightening the place with their valuable jewels and ornaments on their bodies and taking advantage of this light, they steal the butter that is kept hanging on a pot from a swing high up. See, Shukade Goswami is describing these activities of Krishna and Balaram very seriously to the assembled sages. So what is the message? Krishna and Balaram's activities are no ordinary activities because Krishna and Balaram are not ordinary human children or human beings. Krishna and Balaram are the supreme absolute truth. They have appeared simply for the sake of uh, giving pleasure to the devotees and declaring to the whole world that simply by hearing about their activities, which are apparently like uh, mischievous activities of small playful children or even some so-called political activities, or some military activities, because Krishna and Balaram were involved in killing so many demons. So hearing these activities, remembering them, describing them, or even uh, talking about them, in any way uh, connected to these activities of Krishna and Balaram, one will become completely purified. One will be able to cross over this ocean of material existence and attain the supreme perfection of going to Krishna's abode without any practice of any other austerity, any other sacrifice, any other charity, any other... Uh, Spiritual practice, nothing is required. This is what Shukade Goswami informs Parikshit Maharaj. Simply hear about Krishna and Balaram's uh, uh, playful, uh, mischievous uh, child, uh, uh, childhood activities. So therefore, in the Bhagavatam, a good portion of Bhagavatam is devoted, almost one third of the tenth canto, which is the biggest canto, is devoted for describing Krishna and Balaram's childhood activities. So among these descriptions here, uh, there is uh, one, past there are many pastimes of Krishna and Balaram. Uh, 
killing different demons sometimes most of the time krishna would kill the demons sent by kamsa to vrindavan from mathura but sometimes uh, balaram would kill the demons so one such uh, past time i am going to read uh, the killing of the demon dhenuka sura uh, once when krishna and his elder brother balaram uh, they reached the age of 6 years they crossed the fifth year till 5 years they are called kumaras hmm? kaumaram uh, till 5 years after that 6th year to 10th year they are called pauganda their age is called pauganda 6th to 10th so when krishna and balaram reached their 6th year then the covered men decided to give these two boys charge of taking the cows for grazing till they were 5 years old they were taking calves small calves for grazing so when they came to the 6th year then they were given the calves for uh, cows for grazing so i accompanied by the cows and all the covered boy friends krishna and balaram went used to go to different forests for cow herding then krishna spoke to his elder brother balaram as follows my dear brother you are superior to all of us and your lotus feet are worshiped by the demigods just see how these trees full with fruits have bent down to worship your lotus feet it appears that they are trying to get out of the darkness of being obliged to accept the form of trees actually the trees born in the land of vrindavan are not ordinary living entities having held the impersonal point of view in their past lives they are now put into stationary condition of life but now they have the opportunity of seeing you in vrindavan and they are praying for further advancement in spiritual life through your personal association generally the trees are living entities in the mode of darkness the impersonal philosophers are in darkness but they eradicate it by taking full advantage of your presence i think the drones that are buzzing all around you must have been your devotees in their past lives they cannot leave your company because no one can be a better more affectionate master than you you are the supreme and original personality of godhead and the drones are just trying to spread your glories by chanting every moment in vrindavan all the residents of vrindavan the covered boys the covered uh, women the covered men the covered girls the cows the calves the bees the peacocks the monkeys the birds the flowers the trees the plants the rivers all of them are devotees of krishna and balaram all of them so that is what krishna is describing here that these uh, residents of vrindavan are always engaged in glorifying krishna and balaram but their language is not the same their language is different krishna can understand and speak the language of each resident of vrindavan krishna can speak the language of the birds krishna can language uh, can speak the language of the bees krishna can speak the language of the animals the parrots the peacocks because for common people's ears the peacocks are crying one way the parrots are just making some chirping sound and the animals are having their own sounds but we cannot make out ordinary people cannot make out but actually they are all speaking in their own language that's what the bhagavatam reveals and krishna and balaram can understand their language can speak their language also so here it is said that the drones drones are one kind of bees they are glorifying balaram uh, and they are trying to spread balaram's glories by chanting every moment balaram's name i think some of them must be great sages devotees of your lordship 
and they are disguising themselves in the form of drones because they are unable to give up your company even for one moment. My dear brother, you are the supreme worshipable Godhead. Just see how the peacocks in great ecstasy are dancing before you. The deer whose behavior is just like the gopis are welcoming you with the same affection. And the cuckoos who are residing in this forest are receiving you with great joy because they consider your appearance is so auspicious in their home. Even though they are trees and animals, these residents of Vrindavan are glorifying you. They are prepared to welcome you to their best capacity as is the practice of great souls in receiving another great soul at home. As for the land, it is so pious and fortunate that the footprints of your lotus feet are marking its body. So like this Krishna glorified Balaram and Krishna is revealing, these words of Krishna are revealing to us Balaram is no ordinary person. As much as Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead appearing as a small child, as the son of Nanda and Yashoda, Balaram also even though appearing as a very attractive child of Rohini and Nanda Maharaj, actually Balaram also is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the Bhagavatam explains Krishna is the original Personality of Godhead and Balaram is his first expansion. Balaram is always engaged in activities with Krishna. In Krishna's pastimes, Balaram is also participating as another cowherd boy in Vrindavan or as another prince in Mathura or simply as Krishna's companion when Krishna is ruling Dwaraka as the king of Dwaraka. Balaram also is there in Dwaraka as the uh, elder brother of Krishna but he is always engaged in participating in Krishna's pastimes. Sometimes Balaram separately also performs his pastimes, his leela, his activities. So some of those activities are also described in the Bhagavatam, the separate activities of Balaram. Once Balaram, he came to Vrindavan from Dwaraka because the residents of Vrindavan were missing Krishna and Balaram. So Balaram came and he spent about three months in Vrindavan, along with the residents of Vrindavan. Uh, so he performed also rasa dance, because the gopis were missing Krishna. So then the gopis, uh, they took pleasure in serving Balaram. And Balaram also uh, gave pleasure to the gopis by performing rasa dance. Uh, Balaram once, when the battle of Kurukshetra began, Balaram was actually related to both the Pandavas and Kauravas. Even Krishna was related to both Pandavas and Kauravas. Krishna did not take any side. He simply said, I will be on the battlefield as a, a, a chariot driver of whoever wants to, me to be the chariot driver. So Arjuna, among the Pandavas, chose Krishna on the Pandava side. And Krishna's army was chosen by Duryodhana on the Kaurava side. That is how Krishna and his army got divided in the battle. Army would fight, Krishna would not fight. What about Balaram? Balaram decided not to take any side. What did he do? Before, just before the battle of Kurukshetra began, Balaram went away on a pilgrimage, long pilgrimage. So he travelled to different holy places. He came to a place called Naimisharanya. In Naimisharanya, there was one very proud uh, Vedic scholar, a disciple of Vyasadeva by name Romaharshana Sutta. This Romaharshana Sutta was very proud of his learning. He was supposed to be expert in the fifth Veda, Puranas and Itihasas are called the fifth Veda. So, Vyasadeva had entrusted to different disciples the um, um, propagating of these different branches of the Vedas. So, Rigveda was assigned to one 
disciple of Vyasadeva, to be propagated, taught, disseminated this knowledge of Rig Veda, then Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda, the four Vedas. The fifth Veda, which is the Puranas and Ithiasas, Vyasadeva entrusted to his disciple Roma Harshana. This Roma Harshana was very proud. He was sitting in a big assembly and he was speaking about these Puranas and Ithiasas to so many uh, students. They were all different sages. They were hearing about the Ithiasas and Puranas. Then this Roma Harshana was very proud. I am a very big scholar. So when Balaram walked into that assembly, all the sages recognizing Balaram as the Supreme Personality of God, they stood up in respect for Balaram. This Roma Harshana Sutta thought, I need not stand up. So he was sitting on an asana and he was speaking. He did not get up when Balaram came. So Balaram, in order to show his mercy to this Roma Harshana Sutta, who was very, very proud, he just took one blade of grass and he just touched it to the neck of Roma Harshana Sutta. Immediately, Roma Harshana Sutta, his neck, his head was cut off. Just by one blade of grass, just touching. So, Balaram actually is a supreme personality of Godhead. And his killing or protecting is the same. In either case, somebody is killed or protected, they are delivered by Balaram. So, Roma Arshana Sutta was delivered. He became purified of all sinful reactions. He became free from all pride. And he was liberated by Balaram. Apparently, Balaram killed Roma Arshana Sutta. But the Supreme Lord, either as Krishna or Balaram or Rama or Varshurama or uh, Ramachandra, Lakshmana, any of the incarnation of the Supreme Lord, their killing is not killing. Their killing is liberating, delivering, purifying, freeing the person who is killed from all sinful reactions. Delivering them. So, Balaram delivered Roma Harshana Sutta hmm? while traveling on pilgrimage to different holy places. Like that, Balaram also performed extraordinary pastimes and they are described in the Bhagavatam. But we should understand, Balaram is not just an uh, ordinary human being. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, appearing with Krishna and performing some pastimes, many pastimes with Krishna, but some pastimes he also performed separately. So hearing those pastimes, remembering them, thinking of them, speaking about them, reading about them, describing them, in any way coming in contact with this pastimes described in the Bhagavatam, one will become completely purified. So on this auspicious day of Balaram, appearance, anniversary, let us all pray to Lord Balaram that he bless us with uh, Krishna consciousness. Uh, if his blessing is there, we need not do any austerity, we need not practice any spiritual life, nothing. Simply by his blessing, we become Krishna conscious and then we are able to actually perfect our life and go back to Godhead. So now we will have Arati and uh, Kirtan and Prasadam. Shri <clears throat> Baladam Balaram Purnima Mahamahotsav ki jai. Krishna Balaram ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai.